this entire presentation so you don't have to worry about taking pictures of anything you see because you're going to get the entire presentation that you can post on Google Classroom or however you want to communicate, okay? All right, here we go. I'm going to share my screen. I hope it works. So here we go. <laughs> Your entire screen. Okay. And if somebody could just tell me whether or not you see this. Ms. Davis? You, yep, you are all good. All good. Yeah. All, right. all right. So once again, welcome and thank you for having me here today. I'm Lori DeFields and I'm the very, very proud principal of the Arts Academy of Benjamin Rush. And today I'm here to talk about our school and our programs and to help. Oh, sorry. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. We're going to a lot of different schools, but it's basically to help you make a very, very important decision, probably one of the many important decisions that you're going to be making, um, you know, in life, uh, which high school to go to, where you're going to apply and where you're going to ultimately um, accept and where you're going to attend. So I want to take a moment and take a look at our vision and mission. Um, I'm going to read it to you. Rush Arts is based on the belief that the arts provide an opportunity to develop intellectual growth and personal creativity as part of a rigorous academic curriculum. We emphasize the building of a reflective community of learners who are adaptive critical thinkers and creators while preparing our students for college and professional careers. Transdisciplinary teaching and learning are applied in every classroom. Rush Arts prepares students to become active members of a democratic society by fostering a culture of respect for the various views of our diverse student population and encouraging student voice in the pursuit of social justice. Our school was founded on core values that are woven into every aspect of our program. Our entire school community looks at literature, at life, through these lenses, these values of imagination, communication, empathy, perspective, analysis, and commitment. And if you become a member of our school family, you will become very comfortable and familiar with these values. Our arts programs are listed here for you. So when you apply to our school, you will choose one area of art. You will either choose visual arts, vocal music, instrumental, theater, or dance. These are four-year programs, and we meet 53 minutes a day for four years. So here we have, once again, visual arts, vocal music, instrumental music, theater, or dance. Those are our programs. Our requirements in terms of academics are all A's and B's, no more than one C. We're really looking for academic excellence. We're looking for very good attendance, no suspensions, and a successful audition submission. All students who apply to our school are being asked to submit an audition video. If you're looking at these requirements and you're thinking, I'm not sure if I meet these academic requirements, but if you're passionate about the arts and after this presentation, you determine that the Arts Academy of Benjamin Rush is a school that you can see yourself attending, I encourage you to apply. I encourage everyone who's passionate about the arts, who determines that our school is a place that you can see yourself attending, I encourage you to apply. Students from all over Philadelphia can apply to our program. Our students come from almost every neighborhood in the city of Philadelphia. It is a point of pride in our school. We have a lot of music opportunities, but this is our vocal program. If you are interested in applying to our vocal program, these are some of the opportunities that stem from our vocal program. Master class, solo acts, all city choir, modern band, chamber singers, all of these are possibilities for students who are interested in the vocal program. 
Once you receive this presentation from your counselor today, you will be able to click on these links and see examples of our program of student performances. And I urge you to do that. I will show you one today. I'm going to have to choose in the interest of time. So I have Okay, I just heard a phone call. Is everybody here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something in the meat. Are we okay? Yes, whoever just called in, please mute yourself. Thank you. Sorry about that. I got a little distracted. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm not, every time you see a link, I'm not going to click on it. There's certain links I'm going to click on, but please know that when you get this presentation, you can click on every single link and see every performance that interests you. We also have our theater program, and it's the goal of our theater program is to develop our students into thoughtful producers and consumers of many forms of theater. So if you're interested in theater, you might be interested in writing, you might be interested in performing. So I urge you to go to our website and explore every art area. And I'm gonna share that website with you very shortly. But let's get through our art areas. Instrumental music, your choices are concert band, string ensemble, orchestra jazz band and our website has lots for you to to um to see as well and also our rush Arts rush arts dance department um you can take a look at what we offer there as well and what i thought i would do let's see if i can real quickly <laughs> So that was a little tease, I know, but I just wanted to give you a little tease so that you are <laughs> inspired to go on to our website. And then we have visual arts, and you can take a look here, and it um, it's actually showcasing um, two of our, one of our classrooms, and um, giving you a little, just a little glimpse into our building. Okay, so what is the high school selection process? There are two steps that if you are interested in our program that you have to take. The first step is to apply online at philasd.org. And when you go to philasd.org, what you're going to do is you're gonna follow the prompts, and this is for any school, not just Rush, and you're going to find your fit, um, and you're gonna to go to learn more, you're gonna click on that, and then you're going to um, apply now. And when you apply now, you're going to choose your five schools. The one piece of advice I can give you is before you start the application process that you choose all five schools. If you choose three and you go back into the application process and you choose two more, it will delete the first three. And that is something that a lot of students don't realize. So once you decide which five schools you to which you want to apply, you want to then begin the application process. However, that's only part one of the application process for the Arts Academy of Benjamin Rush. The second part of the process is to create and submit an audition tape. So before you can even do that, you have to determine which area of art you're interested in pursuing for four years. Once you decide which area of art, you will go to our website with this link that I'm going to give you, and then you will click on the area. So since you saw a dance before, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to theater now, and we're just gonna look at the process. So how do you go about submitting an audition tape? You'll click on theater, and the teacher will tell you. Our teachers have taken the time to create videos that walk you through the process of creating and submitting an audition tape. Hi folks. 
My name is Ms. Wojcik, and I'm the Director of Theater at the Arts Academy at Benjamin Rush. I am excited that you are interested in auditioning for the program, and I'm here to give you a little bit of background about how theater works at Rush and give you some tips and information to help walk you through the audition process. The goal of the theater Okay, that's also a tease. So if you're interested in any of the art areas, you can look at the video that corresponds with the area of art that you're interested in, and you can watch it a million times if you want. You do not have to start creating that video until you are sure of what you wanna do and you are ready. And you have from the moment you click on that video until the second week of December to get that audition video to us. So you have plenty of time to do your very, very best. And what we're learning about the virtual world is that there are some, some advantages to being virtual because what you have to accomplish in one in-person audition, um, you now have months to, perf well, not months, but you have many, many weeks to perfect. So, so this, is, this is a positive that we're taking out of this, this um, difficult situation. Our indicators of success in our school are our graduation rate. We have a 98, 99% graduation rate. Um, the percentage of students scoring proficient or advanced on keystones as compared to the district, our grade data, our star data, our college acceptance rate, um, the climate and safety of our building, our school. Um, we have over 15 teacher student led clubs. We're actually over 20 now and parents and student satisfaction. A sample ninth grade roster looks like this. So this is something that you might want to take a look at. All ninth graders have pretty much the same roster um, unless they um, score proficient in algebra one in eighth grade and then we will place the student in geometry. If there's no keystone exam that year, then we will put all students like we did this year into algebra one. Um, and then students can double up in the following year if they wanna take AP calculus in their senior year. But basically this is what a freshman roster looks like. Our school day right now, 7.50 a.m. to 2.54 p.m. We open our doors at 6.45 a.m. for those early early, achieve, early arrivers. Um, our classes are 53 minutes in length, even the arts classes. Our advisory is actually 20, well, 25 minutes. After school activities end at 4.30 p.m. every day when we are face-to-face. -face. Um, in the virtual world, it might be a little different. All students get free lunch and free breakfast, and all students who live 1.5 miles away get a free trans pass. We do have physical education. Um, um, things are a little on hold right now due to the pandemic, but um, these are the sports that we have when we are not in a pandemic. And then real quickly, So, 
you get the idea. That is a, a virtual tour. And um, when you get the link, uh, when you get this presentation, you'll be able to take the entire tour of our building. Please know that um, this virtual tour was created after schools were shuttered. So it's a little spooky to see a building with no, um, no uh, adults or students or anybody in it. It's a little vacant and dies for that because um, we didn't know we'd have to do a virtual tour or that we would need to do a virtual tour actually um, so uh, that's why it looks the way it does but it's kind of interesting so what I will do is I will stop sharing so that I can see your beautiful faces or your beautiful pictures of your of your faces and at this time, Ms. Davis, our SBTL and English teacher, is going to help me with your questions because I want to be able to answer all of your questions because I'm so excited at the possibility of receiving applications and audition tapes from all of you. Okay, so I've been answering a lot of questions in the chat. Um, the one question I'm not able to answer is probably to the counselor and teacher that's here uh, of when this slide uh, slide deck and video will be available. Um, so if you can make sure to answer your students with that. Um, today, the one question today, that I didn't, okay. oh, go ahead. Yep. I the one question that I didn't get to is the uh, date for the aud audition. When are the auditions due by? So we are asking that everyone submit by the second week of December. So if you need an actual hard date, um, I would like to have them by the 18th of December. Because remember, we have to have enough time to view them and then to make decisions and get those decisions to the Office of Student Placement. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm still answering questions. Uh, what are some of the common universities our students go to? So uh, the question, there are a couple of questions about uh, our college acceptance rate. So I said that we have a 99% college acceptance rate. Um, I think it was 100 last year. I'm not really sure. All of our students get accepted into college. Now, whether you go, <laughs> that's a different decision. Um, but all of our students get accepted into college. Uh, but if you could talk about some of the colleges that our students attend. So um, our students attend University of Pennsylvania. They attend um, University of Pittsburgh. They attend Temple University, Penn State, um, NYU, um, LaSalle University, Holy Family University, um, pretty much, and then a lot of private little universities. Um, most of our students will apply to three to five different universities. They have their reach we call it and then their safe school and schools in between and they usually most of our students get accepted to four out of five if they're not applying to an ivy league five out of five if they're applying to an ivy league only a few of our students get into ivy league but um they have like i said their reach schools their safe schools but pretty much we have an excellent college acceptance rate about um, 78% of our students matriculate who apply to college, and then about 89% go on to their second year. So that those are really um, good statistics. You can also go on the school district website, and you can go to our school, and you can see our entire school profile, look at all our data, and you can really, really see um, what our students here are accomplishing. Um, can you also talk about when the students will know when they're accepted? Yeah, um, they usually find out either the last week in January, first week in February, but don't quote me, but that's usually probably first week in February, um, about the time. It's about the time. It's usually when school budgets, um, everything is connected to when school budgets come out. We have to know how many students we're getting in order to know what our budget is going to be. Okay. Um, the next question uh, I would say a, a couple of students have is about our program. So AP classes, honors classes, could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. We offer in 12th grade AP calculus, AP literature, AP government, AP physics, and AP visual arts. 
We also offer honors physics in 11th grade. We offer honors English 3. And is there another honors class, Ms. Davis? I'm Did we do honors physics? <laughs> yeah, honors physics. And I think Ms. Fetter does an honors social science. I think she Correct. does. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can you talk about if you come into the school as one major um, and you want to change majors, can that happen? Also, could you talk about our student clubs? Okay, so back to the majors. So we have a ratio that can be no more than 33 to 1 in a class. So if a student wants to change majors, first there has to be, say, there has to be space in that major. So if there is not space, then we wouldn't be able to do that. However, if there is space, then that student would talk to their current arts teacher, let them know, and then we have a discussion and a meeting. And if there's space and there's, you know, there you pass an audition, we would give you an audition, then that could happen. Um, depending on when you ask, it might happen for the next year, or if you ask in the beginning of the year, it might happen that year, but it won't happen mid-year, okay? All right. Can you talk about what separates our school from other schools? What separates our schools from other schools? Well, from if you're determining whether or not you want a, a special admit, admit art school or a comprehensive high school, the difference is that we guarantee that you will be able to major in your art for four years. So that becomes your primary focus in terms of your roster. Everything else is scheduled around your art class. We make sure that whatever you major in, whether it's dance, theater, vocal, instrumental music, or visual arts, that you get that class first. Because remember, we're a small school. You're only gonna be, there's only one vocal one class. There's only one theater one class. There's only one um, you know, instrumental. Now there are several visual arts classes because we have a larger visual arts program. So we're looking at larger numbers in visual arts. So basically, um, I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was about switching uh, into a different major and then about clubs, student clubs. No, no, no. It was, um... So if they come in as like, let's say a dance major, but I decide I'm not really into dance, I want to do vocal. Could that happen? Right, right, right. Okay. So um, so basically, you know, it's, it's about the numbers for that. Um, in terms of the after school clubs, that was another question. Mm -hmm. We have, if you go on our website, you will see how many clubs we have. Our website is so awesome. I have to, to give a shout out to um, one of our teachers, our visual arts teacher, Mr. Maza, who um, kind of manages our website. It's really, really comprehensive. It's great if you're interested in our school to take a look. But our students, they are the ones, we have a process where they can um, apply to lead a club. All they have to do is have a few friends who are interested in that club as well. We have, and then they have to determine how they will run their club, what the focus of their club is, and they have to get a teacher to sponsor. Meaning, a teacher to say, "Okay, I will be the general, over, you know, sponsor of the club, but you're leading it." And if they can convince a teacher to do that, and we've never had a situation where they couldn't, unless it was a, you know, not an appropriate club, and that very rarely happens. So we have clubs like Anime Club. Is it called K-pop club? Am I saying that right? K-pop yeah, club. <laughs> yeah, we have, you know, book club. We have cheer club. We, we, if a student can think of it and is committed to it, then they can do it. Um, so we are very, very welcoming when it comes to um, student ideas and student voice. And student clubs are part of that process. Um, I just like to add that we also have three councils. Um, so we have our student council, which handles more of like the governing policies of our school um, and have an active role in our school advisory council meetings that we have each month. Then we have our spirit council. And that was a group that was created two years ago um, based on student voice that was saying that we were that we had issues in our school that weren't being addressed. So we created a program for students to address those issues and create resolutions. And then we also have another council that was created from students as well, which is the United Minorities Council. So 
many students from various minority groups felt like they didn't have a voice in our school. And so we created a council in order to hear their voices as well as educate our school community. Um, so all of those are application-based councils. Uh, and I am actually one of the co-advisors of the United Minorities Council as well. Um, so there's definitely opportunities to join various clubs as well as councils at our school and also create your own. Um, before you give so me really a question, before you give me question I remembered the other question. The <laughs> gotcha. question this is what happens, folks, when you get a little bit older. Uh, <laughs> so the question was, how do we differ? Um, how does our school differ from other schools? And I was talking about the fact that in four years you major in this art area. So let's just say you decided to go to a comprehensive high school. You could probably take art in that school. However, that school's mission and vision may not be to ensure that you stay in that art, you know, course for four years. We not only are committed to that, we ensure that. If you choose dance, you will dance for four years. If you choose vocal, you will be singing for four years. So this is something that we take very, very seriously, the arts, and that's how it differs from a comprehensive school. How does it differ from a school like Swenson or a school like SLA? It's a different focus. So Swenson will be focusing more on the, seat, the career technical education, and we focus on art. So what's, I started this presentation with, we wanted to help you make an informed decision. It's not about saying, hey, we're the best school, come to us. We're only the best school if we're the best school for you. So you make that decision, not us. We, we tell you what we can do for you, and we show you what we've done for other students, but then it's up, for, up to you to decide, well, what do you want your school to do for you? And then you look at all the schools that are available, and you decide which schools you're gonna apply to and ultimately accept based on what they offer and what you desire. So if our school, if you're passionate about the arts, and you like what you see on our website or what you've seen today or what you're gonna see when I share this presentation with you, then I urge you to please not only apply, but go to our website and start working on that audition tape. More questions. Can you talk about our uniforms? Um, so I mentioned that there are no uniforms in capital letters, which is something that I'm really passionate about um, because our students helped develop our program, but if you our, our policy on uniforms, but if you could talk more about that. Yeah, so we spend a lot of time in various groups, our leadership team, our student council, our school advisory council, home and school, you name it. We talked about uniforms for probably three years until we determined as a school that this is a family decision and that it wasn't for, the, for our school to determine what students should wear. And we came up with general ideas and a general philosophy that I'm not going to read to you now. I want you to go to our website, go to the student handbook and find it. That's your assignment tonight if you accept it. It's your mission if you accept it to go and figure it out. But basically our philosophy, just kind of simplifying it for you, is that we want to empower you with decision-making op opportunities so that we can prepare you for life. So we want you to look at our philosophy and make decisions about what you're wearing that you believe will not interfere with learning or offend somebody. So I saw some interesting things like fingers, tips, skirts, straps. We don't get involved in, in the intricacies of what you decide to wear. If you feel good about it, you feel safe, you feel happy in what you're wearing, as long as it doesn't offend somebody, and as long as it doesn't put you at a risk, we're fine with it. Okay. okay. Um, I thought this was a great question. Can you talk about the staff, um, our counselors? Uh, we don't have an assistant principal, but if you could talk about the staff. and I Let yeah. me tell you, I am delighted to talk about the staff. <laughs> I say this to them, and I'm going to say this to you. I am in awe of our teachers. Obviously, as a principal, I want our students to learn something new every day they walk into our building, and I'm confident that they do. What I didn't realize as a principal was that I was going to learn something new every day from my staff, from our staff. We have an extremely caring, dedicated, 
compassionate and committed staff, they will know your name. They will know you. How? Because they make it their mission to know you. You will be known, you will be loved, and you will be cared for. And that is something that is actually more important to me than any test score. And I'm saying it, I'm being recorded, sorry. <laughs> but if you don't love your school and feel loved and connected, then how can we teach you and how can you learn? So it's very important to us that, um, that, that we are a family and that you feel that way when you are here. And we are a small school. And, and yes, I'll admit it's maybe a little easier to achieve that. We only have right now 656 students. We have about 32 teachers and one principal. Um, we do have a climate manager, but it's not for discipline because we don't really have many discipline issues. It's for it's to um, address the social and emotional needs of our students and also restorative practices when students have issues with one another because that can happen. Um, so yeah, staff. Our staff's amazing, and and you can read the by the bio for every staff member on our website. Once again, I'm directing you to the website, but we have a bio for every teacher. And um, right now, I'm going to tell you a little secret, but don't tell anybody I told you. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you go on our website, I still have up the back to school night videos that our teachers created. So <laughs> you, if you're a parent here. You can see that. <laughs> um, talking about students, how many students do we accept? And then how many end up coming to Rush? Could you talk about that? Your question is <clears throat> rock ball D. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a good question. Who wrote that question? <laughs> question. That was Ari. <laughs> That's a great question. So I don't know what's gonna happen in this virtual world, and I'm gonna be transparent. I'm a little scared because, you know, this virtual world is uncertain, but in the past, prior to the virtual world that we are now all experiencing, I would get 1,200 applications for a class of hopefully 165. Do not let that scare you, please. Do not let it discourage you, why? Because in order, remember I told you in order to be considered, you have to submit an audition tape. Trust me when I tell you, we don't get 1,200 auditions. I usually offer about 400 auditions, about 300 students show. We usually accept very close to the 300 and only about 180 accept us back. And that usually brings me to the 165 who actually show up. It's not a science, but I've been doing this for seven years at this school kind of figured it out. So what I'm saying to you, and please hear me clearly, if you are passionate about the arts and our school is where you see yourself attending, work on that audition tape and then let's see what happens, okay? Because even though 1,200 applications, if you're passionate and you love our school, you have a better chance of being accepted than not, okay? Can you talk about trans passes and who receives them? Yes. Um, so they measure not by GPS and not by the route that your parents like to take. It's like, do you ever hear the expression, how the crow flies? Um, they will do a direct measurement from your house to our school. And if it is 1.5 miles or further, you get a free trans pass and we issue that to you. Um, I have had, I've had situations in the past where Two families lived on a very long street, and one family got a free trespass, and the others did not. The other family did not, and there's nothing I can do about it. It doesn't come from the DeFields transportation program. It is the, it, it is the school district transportation in conjunction and um, partnership with SEPTA. I have nothing to do with it other than distributing it. Um, a lot of questions are about the auditions, but I did tell students, please go to our website. Um, each art department has specific requirements. And so you definitely want to make sure that you listen to the videos, that you read the information, depending on what art major that you are applying to. So you'll get all those questions answered. Um, and in reference to visual arts, visual arts covers media, digital, um, they design, 
it's it's a it encompasses a lot. Um, you take a basic course your freshman year, and then you can branch out into the various photography, different areas of art that you so choose. Um, but definitely, like I said, check out our website, and it's all listed there, um, as well as in our presentation. Um, I'm trying to see if I missed anything. So bullying, how do we handle that? Yeah, so basically we use restorative practices. So obviously we investigate any complaint or um, you know tip or whatever we get, we do a full investigation. As I said, I have a climate manager um, who is available to do all the investigations. We talk to families, we talk to students involved, and then we start our restorative practices. Our end goal is to reflect reunite, connect, change behavior, and create a solid environment for all who are involved. Um, we want to understand that students are learning and growing, and we want to, part of the educational process is learning how to change behavior. Um, punishing makes people feel good for a second, but it doesn't necessarily change behavior. Um, so we, we use a restorative approach. We use restorative circles, restorative practices, and the goal is to get people to see what they have in common and how they can connect as opposed to why this tension or this kind of behavior. Now, obviously, if we're not effective and things continue, then we start implementing the student code of conduct and, uh, and act appro appropriately and accordingly. Um, this is a question. Uh, do you, you already need to know how to do a major um, in order to select it? Or like, can you come in just saying like, I think I'm an actor. <laughs> I think I want to do theater. Question. Whose question was that? That is Samantha. Samantha. I love that question. <laughs> so if you were Samantha, I love this. Oh, let's look at it this way. If you were right now a an accomplished accomplished actor or an accomplished singer or an accomplished musician, you wouldn't really need us, would you? You wouldn't even need us. We want you to be passionate about it. That means you need to show us that this is something you enjoy. This is something you're committed to. This is something you see yourself doing. And then let us do what we do as teachers and educators. So no, we're not looking, oh, I love that question. We are not looking for perfection. We are looking for passion. Just like I really care whether my teachers are passionate about what they teach. That, is, that means more to me than anything. I want students to be passionate about what they learn. Whether it's art, whether it's math, whether it is English, science, social studies, language, I want our students to be passionate. So that's part of the job of an educator, right? To kind of like make that happen, inspire students to be passionate. But yeah, if you're interested in something, now I will say if you apply for the vocal program, <laughs> but you're afraid to sing in front of people, I'd say, nah, maybe not, because that's a requirement. So the other part to this is you have to be willing to perform in that area or to produce in that area. So that's the part of it. Not so much are you an expert, but are you willing to put yourself out there? We're creative and performing arts high school, right? Visual and performing arts. So there is a performance expectation, okay? Um, I feel like you've talked about this, but if you could be a little more specific, um, I like this question as well. What are your goals as a school? Ah, oh, the goals of the school. I love this question. This might be one of my personal goals, but when we say we're preparing students for college and professional careers, how we do that is we create an environment where you can determine where your strengths lie 
and where your interests lie so that you can make a better decision about what you want to do when you leave our school. So really the goal is to give you that well-rounded education that includes a strong focus on the arts so that when you leave us, you know exactly what you're passionate about, what you do well in, and where you see yourself. So yeah, the goal is to get you to that next level in your life, in your educational journey. Um, so these are more questions that are specific to the art major. So again, I'm just recommending the students and families, please go check out our website. Um, you'll see all the different areas. Um, one thing that is really special about our arts program um, that might be a little different from other schools is you're going to like dive really deep into the art area. So for instance, if you go for um, theater, you're going to be an actor, producer, director, writer. You're doing it all. You're going to know how to work the soundboard. You're going to know how to do the lights. You're going to work everything. So you're going to know the, all, the ins and outs of a production, right? Um, if you are a vocal student, you're like, oh, I can sing. Guess what? You're going to learn how to read music. You're going to learn how to play instruments. You're going to learn... Um, different parts of our modern band, which is something that you achieve at your senior year. Um, if you go in as an art student, guess what? You're going to be doing some different, unique drawings. Um, if you're into digital art, guess what? You're doing some pictures and photography and design as well. So our, our programs um, cover everything in that four years. So don't think like you're working on just being an actor for four years. You're doing it all. So that's something to think about as well. Um, in our instrumental department, we have all city. Um, we also have jazz band is uh, another class that you can audition for, I believe Mr. Marks does. Um, so there's definitely, def definitely different areas of art in our program. Art takes a big chunk of our school. We are definitely a performing arts school. Um, did I miss anything? I saw teachers, counselors. <laughs> I don't know. I saw um, a question where someone asked if they were allowed to listen to music while we work. Did we answer that yet? No, we didn't. I didn't see that. So that's a really interesting question. Our teachers are the chief executive officers of their classrooms. So that would be a question for a teacher. It depends on what, what you're working on. So for example, if you were in the AP visual arts studio and you were perfecting your last piece that's gonna be submitted for your AP exam, I would imagine that the AP art teacher would let you listen to music so you're not distracted and you're finishing up your, your, your masterpiece. But if you are in AP Calc or you are in, uh, let's do Algebra One, and you're in a breakout room and you're supposed to be collaborating with your peers um, to solve for X, um, no, you wouldn't be listening to music and that would be considered off task. So really the question about listening to music is very specific to what you're doing and that's really a question for a teacher. And I would say normally, not really, unless you are working independently, asynchronously on something that won't distract you if you're listening to music and your teacher would help you explore that. But you would have to um, adhere to the norms of each classroom. And I All right, so, cell phone policy. Yeah, so because our students come from every neighborhood in the city of Philadelphia, and um, the commute can be anywhere from 15, from a walk around the corner to two hours on two buses and a trolley or a, you know, the, the L or subway, we expect you to have a cell phone. We really do. It, it keeps you safe on the way to and home. If something happens and you need your parents or you need a friend or you need help or you need to, you know, whatever you need to do, we expect you to have a cell phone. But at the high school level, especially if you're applying to a special admit school, we expect you to be responsible with that privilege. So with the privilege of being able to walk into our building with a cell phone and have it, we expect you to know that you would only use it before, after, or during lunch, and not during classrooms. And if you having a cell phone ever interfered with your ability to be a successful student here, then we would have a restorative conversation with your parents. It's not like we're like, give me your phone. No, we don't need to do that. We love you, we care about you. We, we would have a conversation with your parents to talk about how we can manage this privilege that you have to have a phone in school. 
right. Um, um, so this is a question. Um, I asked the student to check the website. Apparently they did. Do you know if the student does, wait, if we did dance before, can we use a combination we did for that to apply? So I guess if they did a, a dance and videotaped it before, can they use that as their submission? It's possible, but you have to go on and listen to the videotape from the dance teacher, because if your performance doesn't include a component that she is requiring, then you'd have to read, you'd have to do it from scratch. So you want to make sure that your and 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 it has to be uploaded to YouTube. But I don't want to get into all that because I'm not the expert there, and the teachers really walk you through it. They really, really do, because um, we have perfected this, and we already have people applying, and we're seeing that it. We have some test students, so we know that that it's doable. Um, but I before you would just submit something like that. Please watch the video and make sure that what you have to submit aligns with the requirements of the submission. Okay, but we're not opposed. I'm not opposed to anything as long as it it's what we need. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I have this private question about the theater audition options because there is a typo, and I'm not sure how it's supposed to be spoken. So I'm a little confused. I don't know. Oh, I don't know right. what that means. So in our communication or in the question. Maybe I guess an hour communication. I'm not sure. Can it's Q A M A R be a little more specific? I'm not sure. Uh, do you want me to speak? Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So um, I was looking through the monologue options um about a week ago. Okay. And I was practicing and all, and I realized there was a typo, and I'm not sure how it's supposed to be spoken. Because it was in option three. So what I would recommend is that you email the theater teacher and uh, she would be able to let you know that information. Um, I'm wondering, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna go really quickly to Rush. So then you would go to admissions, and you're saying it is in the theater? Yeah. Yeah, it's monologue three. Okay. Where would that be? Where do I find it? Click here. See up at the top, Mr. Fields. See, it says click here for choices. Slow down. Go back down. <laughs> Too far. There's a blue, right? Click here. First line. There you go. And then option three. Okay. It's where it says people also assume you're like people. Also, also assume you are like one uh, right here. Is that where it is? I guess so. I guess that's what they're talking about. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. What I'm not really sure. Yeah, I will talk with the theater teacher and see if there is a typo or if we can fix it for you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, yeah, she probably, yeah, we'll fix it. So, th sorry about that. We'll fix it, okay? Thank you. Um, um, so, Ms. Davis, if there is one last question that you wanted to, um, if you saw in the chat that you wanted to, to add to I don't believe all. so. I don't believe so. I'm not sure. Um, so it's 137. I just want to first take the opportunity to thank all of our Baldy students for asking some pretty phenomenal questions. Um, I know that Ms. Stavrakis and I are so proud of each and every one of you, and we really know that the students on this call, Mrs. DeFields, are the ones who are passionate and really just 
want to be at your school. And so we can't thank you. And I hope that our eighth graders will drop some big thank yous in our chat here because your presentation today was simply outstanding. There's a lot of information and a lot of things that go into applying to Rush. And if there's one recommendation that I can make to our eighth graders, it's self-advocating and it's getting on that website and it's making sure that you are exploring every option available on that website because you will be successful if you follow those directions. Make sure that you're really comprehensive in your application and you know, email people if you have questions. That's that's what it's all about for sure. So thank you both for your time. I know how much it takes to take an hour out of your day in the middle of a crazy virtual learning schedule. So thank you both so, so you're much welcome. for your time for our students today. Thank you for having us. This school seems amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would say it's pretty amazing. <laughs> I would say it's pretty amazing, and I love Baldy, but I would say that Rush is pretty, pretty amazing. So um, we hope that you get all the applications that you're looking forward to getting for from our students. Um, we're super proud of them. It's a phenomenal class. We're going to miss them. Our largest one yet, 525 students. So we are we are bursting at the seams and have a lot of talent. So. Thank you both so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Safe, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye, Bye. everybody. Thank Bye. you. I still have a question. Yes, Brianna. <laughs> do they do based off of your grades? So remember what we said, it's fifth and sixth grade PSSA scores, and it's sixth and seventh final grades and sixth and seventh attendance records. Okay. So if you need to know your PSSA scores, just shoot me an email and I'll email them right back to you, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. Ms. Stavrakis? Yes. Uh, so what if you were in a private school for fifth and sixth grade and you didn't have PSSAs, but you had Terra Novas? So that message, I'm actually a great question because I'm actually was about to email Ms. Nusky about that. We are going to put that out to every teacher. It's very important for kids that were not in Baldy last year. I need report cards and any test scores, PSSAs, Terra Novas, whatever state you're in, emailed to me. I actually just got a form while we were on this meet in my email saying what I need to do. So me and Ms. Nusky are going to be getting that out to all of you guys. Yep, so we'll make sure it's on your community meeting slides um, at the beginning of your week for this week and next week. We'll put it on Class Dojo. Teachers will post it. So we'll make sure that that you all have the information that you need in order to submit that to Ms. Sebrakis. But how do I get, like, our, how do we get our Terranova scores? Because I don't know how to. And do we just, like, send you our, uh, our grades of our report cards? You can take pictures of it and then just email it to me. If you don't have your Terra Nova scores, I encourage your parents to call your previous schools, but your parents were given copies, so they might have held on to it. If not, they can call the previous school you were at. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, who asked a question about PSSAs? Oh, thanks, Ms. Lusky. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. Nothing yet. All right, great questions, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon and your eighth and ninth period. Great job, everybody. Thanks, Mr. Rockus. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Uh, Mr. Rockus, 